Fascinating, just fascinating watching, sitting there and watching the bees and looking what they're doing. Our agriculture is pretty heavily dependent on most of the crops, vegetables uh, and fruit in particular, that, that we've domesticated depend on bees for pollination. Look at the flight pattern. Wow, where are they going? Two kilometers in a distance all around. What are they doing? They're pollinating. If you like to eat, as I do, then you have to have pollination. The honeybee is very flexible for, for our purposes because we can move them to where the crops are blooming and greatly increase the output. They trucked them all the way from, from Florida up to California for the almond crop and then they can go from there to Oregon, Washington, they can go back to Maine for the blueberry crop, all over. Last year, from Nanaimo South, we lost, and we're not sure of the exact numbers, anywhere from 85 to 90 percent of the managed bees. Last winter I had six hives, lost all six of them. This is the worst bee collapse I think Canada has ever seen. Probably the worst that Canada or the U.S. have ever seen. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the worst that's ever happened. consultation without a chance for the majority of island beekeepers to give input. We hadn't been consulted. Had we been consulted, we would have said, well, you know, we don't have these diseases. We do not have resistant American fall brood. We do not have small hive beetle. We do not have European fall brood. We do not have the large wax moth. We do not have Africanized honeybees. 1,200 people, none of us seeing this stuff. We're the guys with beehives. And we've got a couple of key bureaucrats saying that, no, in fact, you do have these. When the change was made, it caught almost everybody off guard, except perhaps the one guy who complained about the restriction. The bottom line, is the simple threat of a lawsuit from a large commercial beekeeping operation against the AG office was a primary moving force that started this whole ball rolling. One company complained. They'd lost a lot of hives and they wanted to replace them. They said that if the disease profiles are the same on the island and the mainland, then there's no point in having quarantine. They'd take the ministry to court if they didn't drop the quarantine. It's really about economics. You can replace your bees quickly by buying them from the mainland, or you can build up your stock locally, but it's going to take you a year or two to build back up. You just sort of smell a bit of a whiff of it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like old cheese. Vancouver Island could be quarantined as a reservoir of bees. 
in case there's a massive collapse elsewhere. And that's exactly what Vancouver Island has functioned as for two decades. We've been exporting bees like mad because we didn't have the disease that was affecting the mainland. When they had losses, they could make them up from here. But once we've all got exactly the same stuff, and it's being trucked around, if we crash, we all crash at the same time. There are 900 species of native bee in Canada. Bumblebees and solitary bees like mason bees. There's a ton of pollination done by the wild bees. Every new disease that we introduce to an area runs the risk of moving into the wild population. If we lost them, like in many places in North America, and we had to rely on honeybees, then we'd be in serious trouble in terms of producing fruit, vegetables. It's insidious. We're in a state now where it's somehow normal to lose 90% of the bees on Vancouver Island, and it's just a cost of doing business. If you could go back in time to the 1970s and say to beekeepers, this is what 2010 looks like. This is what 2005 looks like. They'd be looking at hell. They'd be looking at a vision of hell. And they go, oh my God, we're not going to do that. It can't go on. It's not sustainable. Get to your computer and email the Minister of Agriculture and demand consultation for the island beekeepers. Save island bees! Save island bees! We'd like to see the quarantine back in place exactly as it was. Just put it back again, you know, take a look at it. We don't want all these diseases coming up. They act like canaries in the coal mine. They're not just beautiful in their own right. What's happening to them either could happen to us or is a result of systems we put in place. And that's really risky. honey wine. Our ancestors were hunting and they saw some bees up in a tree. And on the way back, the honey had dropped down, got so big it was on the ground, and water got onto it, and that meant that it fermented. And they came along and they drank it. And I said, mmm, good. They didn't know what it was. Boom, 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 boom. That's great stuff. And you'd take a good nose, and then you'd take a little sip of it, and the sliver again says, ooh, what are you drinking? Honey wine the nectar of the gods.